It's Remembrance Time, and the children from St Elizabeth's state-aided church school in Reddish are carrying the poppy wreaths they've made from the school along the short walk to St Elizabeth's church. The Key Stage 2 children are used to coming to the church for some of their assemblies, so it's a place they feel at home in. The vicar, Angie Stanton, is there to greet them and remind them of the importance of remembering World War I. The war was brutal and horrible. The guns and tanks ripped into human flesh and hundreds, thousands of people died, sometimes all on one day. Their individual names are remembered in your war memorial in school and in our memorials in church. One of them is our beautiful guardian angel lectern. And here in a moment, the children will lay a wreath and we will remember that people from Reddish and around here died in the war. But that's only half of what we've come here to do. I said we've come here to remember war, but to make peace. Peace doesn't just happen. Peace happens when people decide that they will be part of making it happen. And that's the job of every young person, every child in every classroom in the world. There was a famous Christian called Saint Francis from Assisi, and he wrote a prayer that's become really famous. And the first line is this, Lord, make me a channel of your peace. It goes on to say, where there's upset and hatred, let me be a channel of love. Where there's doubt and fear, let me bring hope. Where there's misunderstanding, where there's intolerance, let me bring understanding and kindness. Every one of us, as we remember war, is given by God the job of being a peacemaker. We make peace, first of all, with the people around us. If everybody here can be a peacemaker, can be kind, gentle, understanding, fair, with the people around them, if all of us can do it, in school, in church, at home, playing out with your friends, little bubbles of peace, little ripples of peace will spread out. Each of us needs to be a little ripple of peace. Making those wreaths before the service was the final task of a group of St Elizabeth's children who earlier in the year had been taking part in Bishop David's poppy planting project to mark the outbreak of World War I back in August. This is the, the type of poppy that grew between the two warring factions. Bishop David told them about his own grandfather who was haunted by awful memories of the war and whose medal Bishop David still treasures. He then introduced the children to some of the sad truths of that war. 
On August the 4th, 1914, there began what seems to our eyes now, four years of a collective madness known as the First World War, pitting thousands and thousands of vulnerable humans against the newfound mechanical might of industrial nations. Machine guns, high explosives and deadly gas devouring the soft flesh of humans and horses. I want to see if I can focus young minds onto that long-gone tragedy. In my diocese, the Diocese of Manchester, we have 191 state-supported church schools. I'm in one of them today, St Elizabeth's here in Reddish. I'm hoping to encourage the children to examine the school's logbook of the period and to look at their own family records to find people who perished in the Great War. Mr Canton lies wounded in the thigh in the hospital in Birmingham. Shirley Tootle, the head teacher here, and Angie Stanton, the vicar of St Elizabeth's, are going to introduce me to the pupils in their assembly. But I was struck as soon as I walked into this hall this morning, I looked across over there, and I saw the special war memorial you have that names the people from this school who died in that war. That's like about one in every three of us. It's like either you or the person sat to your left or the person sat to your right. We're encouraging schools to plant poppies, very special poppies, poppies that are like the poppies that grew in the mud of the fields where men were dying in the First World War just about a hundred years ago today. They're probably quite hardy little plants, but we, we plant them very shallowly. Only about an eighth of an inch of soil needs to be on top of them. I think it's hugely important, the poppy planting project. It'll help this new generation to see, to see something that puts them physically in touch with what happened a century ago. As we plant these poppies, together with people across our diocese, we remember with gratitude and love all those who gave up their lives in the First World War. We pray that as we remember their sacrifice, so shall we use our lives today and the freedom and peace we enjoy in the service of our neighbour and for the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Children have always played games around war. Today it's even more complicated with the computer games that children can have, which, if we're not careful, can, can glorify warfare and almost make it feel as though the, the damage done is unreal. And it can be very easy then to move from that to imagining real war is just as, just as simple and just as harmless. It's very easy in a time of war for people to be consumed by hatred. The, the enemy is dehumanised. I think within the Christian tradition, that constant requirement to, to recognise the humanity of the person who is our enemy acts as one of the great bulwarks against that. Now, I think these poppies here, I think those are the ones that we planted last time. What about the rest of them? <laughs> We got them from the field in Chesterfield because they weren't really growing big enough. They haven't quite grown big enough, mm -hmm. have they? We didn't want it to be a disappointment today. I've got these. I'm going to give each of you one of these, which we're going to give to some of the men folks. Some of the men in your lives have come along to be with us today. So who's this who's with you today? That's your dad. We needed you to to help give the children some understanding of what it must have been like for their predecessors a hundred years ago to suddenly see all the men being taken away from their lives. So what we're going to do is we're going to make you disappear. So children, that must feel very strange, suddenly having all the men disappear out of your lives. But that's exactly what happened a hundred or so years ago to the, the children of the men whose names are on our school war memorial. 
in a moment I'm going to let you go and rejoin your menfolk because we've only made them disappear temporarily. But for your predecessors, a century back, that wasn't an option. Their men didn't come back. These children are the first children that will have no contact with the World War I. So it is important that at St Elizabeth's we share with them the, the people in our school that were linked to it. Over a hundred old boys have joined the Army and Navy. I think the fact that they'll have the puppies coming up, and they'll be able to watch them, and I know they'll watch them, and then when they bloom, they'll be red. Um, I suppose that will be another thing that helps to make real the fact that people died, because red always reminds you of blood. Taking time to reflect on what it means to see a red flower, a poppy, I think that will make the whole thing more real.